Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff. It's Wednesday, so it's First Impressions Day, and today we're looking at, I think, the largest scale anything we've ever reviewed. Uh, certainly the largest scale um, aircraft, and definitely the first time we've got to an aircraft and the box is too big for the table. We've had several ships, never an aircraft. So here we have it, the Airfix 124 Hawker Typhoon Mark 1B Cardor version. So this is a 2019 re-release of a 2014 new tool kit um, and this has just dropped off the Airfix website but there's plenty in the distributor system so if you're interested in this kit it's not difficult to get hold of and shop around because there are some good bargains to be had uh, and there's also some pirates out there as well. So let's start with the box. It's the uh, an Airfix red box. So we've got the scale there and what type of aircraft it is. We can see up the left hand side there, we've got um, paint schemes for four different versions, which is lovely. And the kit number is A19003. Um, and as we look at it, box side contain the usual information that an Airfix box has and then that's the same information that you'd get on the top I think it's the same on both sides let me just check yep and then on this side we've got some detail about the schemes the paints you need um, and the skill level which is four and um, the uh, air miles which would have been six I have already cashed these in. Let's have a quicker, closer look at the paint schemes. So we've got there our list of paints that are common to um, paint schemes A through to D uh, and include the colours required for the pilot in addition and then at the bottom um, for um, paint schemes C and D we've got one additional uh, paint. So if we look at the schemes we've got we've got kent april 1943 we've got uh apple apple drum england june 1944 uh, west sussex december 42 and hampshire june 1944 so all uk based um aircraft um, it looks to me like the camouflage scheme is the same throughout, so it's just the change of the, the details, the yellow nose, white nose, and then the um, D-Day stripes. And if we zoom into the artwork, we can see the Typhoon is engaged in attacking a train. We can see the carriages falling over there and the train um, engine bursting into flames. I'm guessing somewhere in Germany... Nice picture, nice bit of artwork. So, as always, we're going to start with the instructions. We've got um, a full colour um, A4 stapled, um, I'm not even going to say booklet, manual. Look how thick that is uh, for building this. Uh, we've got the um, kit detail at the top there. Gives you um, the dimensions of the finished kit wingspan 528 millimeters so the wingspan is just over half a meter so so good old size um, tells you you've got four decal schemes and three build options which we'll look at in a second uh, then we get a little potted history about the aircraft and some specifications um, as we turn over um, that history and specifications carries on through different languages. Then we get to the please read before construction. That basically tells you that this is a skill level four and therefore is not aimed at people who have not built a model kit before. Some experience of building kits is required. 
Um, then we get the assembly um, instructions, study the instructions, test fit things, that sort of stuff, and our familiar Airfix key. Um, but it does tell you what they all are, so it's easy to, to work out. And then when we carry on over to the next page, page four, um, we have a section here that explains um, some of the things that you need to know before you start the build. So that you've got different options, that the pilot won't fit in at the end and you've got to put them in before um, a certain stage. Um, so um, to be careful with fitting the engine if you're building a particular option and all of that sort of stuff. So there's some real handy tips in there. Um, so don't skip past it, it will, it will help. Then on page five, we've got the options. Um, Option one shows you with the um, wing hatches open to allow you to load the guns and the guns are visible and the ammunition boxes will be visible um, and all the panels taken off so you can see the all the intricacies of the engine and the air scoop underneath. Option, oh, and you've got the cockpit open, so that's the, the car door there uh, and the... Um, top of the canopy open. Option two is essentially the same other than um, you've buttoned up the uh, some of the panels a little bit so the air scoop isn't quite as visible um, but you can see the top of the engine so um, and then option three is with everything uh, buttoned up and the cockpit closed. Now I reckon you probably can do a hybrid of these and do um, one wing open and one wing not open. You just have to plan a little bit. Um, that's what I did with the um, Hellcat and it worked out fine. So, so it's then telling you the same in different languages and we're on page eight when we get to page one. And my first impression, and we, we've got the uh, new format instructions here where they highlight in red what you've just built so you can see orientation further on um, i really like this i think most people do um, but the first thing i can see is um, we've got quite a busy looking assembly already lots and lots of um, metal work there that we're putting together so this is going to look really really busy so Covering it all up would be a shame, I think. Uh, but we're starting with the um, wing spars, which are also going to form the frame for the cockpit. Uh, what's nice to see is where we've got bulkheads and frames coming together, we've got some of the um, geometry highlighted for you, so you know exactly how this should go together. Then our step one bits are being added on in step three, and that's your assembly, so you can double check you've got it all correct. So I really like that. Um, and we have paint colours being shouted out as we go, which is good. Um, then we're getting some support building up that frame. Um, we've got the little foot trays for, for want of a better word and look how detailed all this looks wowzers um, more framework being built up um, we've got not quite sure what that is but we're starting to put some plumbing in pedals in shows your side on how those pedals should be orientated that's a really nice touch um, we've got uh, a little sub-assembly there that then goes in. Lots of it. Is that the seat? That looks like the back of the seat. I think we're building the seat up there. Different options. So you've got to have chosen your options right at the start. So A, C and D, that one, and B, that one. So slightly different styles. So we're already at step 17 as we turn the page to. Uh, so page. yes, we're carrying on with the seat, the seat going in, depending on which version you've you've gone with. 
Um, they continue to show this particular version throughout the build, but it, it could have been that one. At this point, we're deciding whether we want to put the pilot in or not, because that changes what we do with the harnesses. So you can see there, we just cut the uh, plastic harnesses off. Otherwise, they uh, dangle as a separate part on the seat, which is nice. Now, on the Hellcat, they were moulded in, as I remember. They looked really good, um, but I'm fairly sure they were they were moulded in with um, some separate bits at the top. That's how I remember it, anyway. Um, okay, compass, uh, some of the controls, uh, instruments, and dials and bits and pieces going in at this point. Um, so it looks like we've also got um, our first decals going on at this point as well. And then more sort of um, plumbing and pipe work and bits and pieces going in. Step 26 and we've got uh, the final bits going in the cockpit actually. Um, I think that pretty much will complete all the controls and bits. Then we're building the um, pilot. Now, interestingly, what they're showing you here is to build up the the torso, put him in, then put your head in separately. That's a nice feature because with a bit of manipulation, you could pose it, and then put the arms in separately. I'm guessing that's to ensure that it's they're in contact with all the controls and things. So... Very nice. Uh, we'll have to see how well moulded that is, of course. Uh, and then we're building up a couple of different tanks or, or boxes of some type. We appear to have um, dials with a with um, a glass components going into the the front face there of the instrument panel before fitting that in, and then some more. Is that the floor? And another brace at the, on the floor. That is going to look so busy. Step 37, and yeah, we're starting to build up the motor. Now, it does tell you in the front section that the motor is a separate item, sold separately, although Airfix currently don't sell them, so uh, you have to try and source one or an old one or something like that. Um, but it does show you how to put it in and how to wire it up. Um, uh, then we are building up the engine block, which then goes in and we've got all sorts of plumbing going in around it. Lots of little bits there, very nice. More plumbing and auxiliary engine parts all going together. I, I don't know what any of this is. What I do know is it's lots of lovely detail. So if it's nicely moulded, this should look lovely. Lots of pipe work there to make it look busy. More pipe work being built up and going in place. It's going to look so authentic. It, it's absolute crime to button that up, isn't it? Okay, um, and then that looks like we've got start of the air filter or something going in, not quite sure. Yeah, so air filter is being built up then, made up of several parts, attach that in, shows you shows you where it should be, gives you some distances so you can get it all correct. So that means it's probably a tricky part to fit. So that's always a, a good shout. If they're showing you the geometry, it means you can get it wrong. And you won't get the panels to go on around that if you're doing it half paneled or something, unless you've got that all perfectly aligned. I'll tell you that now. Um, it will be a tight fit. Um, Okay, more engine components. This um, this thing that looks like a life preserver, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure someone could tell me what it is. Um, making sure you get the orientation right, so that's good. And then we've got this little um, 
then we've got this part going on there which um, looks quite distinctive that part doesn't it you can see it through the through the front of the air scoop there okay then we are at the point where we're deciding if we are gear up or gear down and that changes which parts we're using got a lot of drilling to do and um, it depends on whether you're putting the electric motor in for some of it so you'll need to study it depends on what ordinance you want to put on so you've got to make a, a decision about audience ordinance at step 88 and it is telling you what drill bit sizes to use and we've got one two three different four different sizes of drill bit to be used there and then the underside of the wing so I'm right we could probably if you wanted to super detail the wing you could probably put all those struts and bits in um, and extra cable in and do that if you wanted so we have more wing support going in so we might have quite a bit of it anyway I'm sure I'm sure we won't have all of it that looks like quite a complex little build up doesn't it more decals going on then we've got fr wing framework going in where it's going to be visible so that'll be where the uh, guns are going to be mounted in does look quite busy the wing in its own right doesn't it uh, then we're building up the uh, guns they look nice telling you to open up the ends so we've not got opened up ends no slide molding at airfix really so to my knowledge um, and that's the uh, ammunition feed so then we're mounting the cannons I mean not ammunition boxes being built up ammunition boxes being built up so that looks like we'll be able to see all that paint that up and weather it that looks stunning not quite sure what those bits are uh, fuel tank these wings are quite detailed as it is um, fuel tanks all sorts of ribs and bits and pieces going in um, and they're going in and then that looks like top surface interesting separate wing tips um, and then we've got parts going in which are going to mount the uh, flaps separate um, lights which are just the lenses the clear parts are just the lenses and um, they have recently done a kit which had the whole tip clear which makes it easier for painting um, but they're constantly innovating airfix at the moment it's really nice to see um, Got a modification there depending on which how you want to orientate your aircraft so that's interesting then we've got the uh, external covers going over the cannons as they protrude out of the wings uh, and again we've got options long or short tail being built up so um, okay so we've got separate tail sections that then glue into place that'll be so they can make the um, part more accurate so that will be interesting to see um, and then that looks like we've got some clear parts going in there so first bit of the fuselage it's telling you that this is for the engine completely open option and you're chopping off this front bit that would cover up the engine so whether you could do one half like that and the other half not you'd have to mess around with the part fitting it and see um, quite a lot of butchery required depending on what you're doing um, yeah interesting what the what else is interesting is we can see all these little ribs here in the fuselage so I wonder if that's an option as well one half of the fuselage on this is a really interesting kit I think so um, yeah showing us that or we've got the different option there or a different option there depending on which, th which three you're doing so it's probably worth making your decisions up through up front going through the 
instructions and crossing out the bits that you're not going to be using so you don't accidentally do something that you, you shouldn't because this isn't going to be a simple build by any stretch of the imagination and then the other side of the fuselage okay then we have um, an un underneath section of the fuselage it's telling us to sand off some bits depending on both options I think uh, exhaust individual exhaust that's nice be interesting to see if they're open or we need to do some work on them yeah that's really nice I'm not sure I'll be putting them on at that stage though depends on whether you're weathering or not that's a, another thing you've got to get straight in your mind before you start whether you're weathering all this or doing it muse museum standard okay so panels going around the um, air scoop the underside of the engine there depending on what which way you're building it um, so it's showing you all these individual panels going on now I guess if you're having the panels off you should see fastener locations so if you're having the panels off you might have a little bit of scratch work to do to drill some holes and bits and pieces uh, then we've got the air flap we've got the geometry for that modifying the part if you want it closed options again lots and lots of possibilities with this and we're building up the tailplane which looks like it will be movable which is nice uh, what's it telling us here? Not quite sure. Some form of location tab that needs a modification. Um, yeah, so that's how you mount the tail up. Um, then we're covering up the guns, or we've got parts there to show the um, the guns open and on display. Um, so that's nice, giving you the different views of how that should look. Uh, then we're on the um, undercarriage area now, and we've got more pipe work going in. Um, hydraulics and bits and pieces, lovely. Then the landing gear itself, which looks looks quite thin so I'm wondering how strong that is um, then we've got oh we've got weighted tires which is nice to see it's showing you the angle which is good and we're building those up there uh, so that's clever they they've got a weighted flat on it but you can turn that around and face it inside if you're parking it in so that you don't see a weighted flat so so that's a good use of a of a part that um, then we've got flaps flap angles which is good landing flaps it's like we've got a little bit of trimming to do for some reason then we're back to fuse large parts again and some internal parts we're on step 206 now and we're starting on the ordnance. so um, the bombs look really nice multiple parts so two halves to a body three parts to do the fins and then we've got the little circular bit at the end um, so that should look authentic and that's the mount for the um, more of the same rockets so depending on how you want your ordnance right propeller okay so we've got individual blades that's nice they seem to be being made up of two parts so that's also good um, and then it mounts on a sprocket unless you're doing the motored version in which case you need to put a length of plastic rod on yourself so I'm guessing you have to source that as they're not referencing a part number. Some of the small delicate details now, foot stirrup for example, pitted tube. Um, then we've got 
Oh, that's to do with the uh, seat harness going on. A bit more detail in the camera. We, we do jump around a little bit. I'm sure there's a reason for it, but we do. And a bit more plumbing. And then we're building up the canopy. So I'm guessing this is the fixed. This is, this is all fixed because this is a car door version, isn't it? There's the car door going on. So that must be a single clear part that you then have to paint up. That's interesting. More parts going in. We can definitely show it open, so that's nice. Right, so 232 steps to complete the build. Now, some of those steps will be option steps, so it's a bit less than that, but it's still a good number of steps, isn't it? Then, as we get to page 38, We've got instructions for painting the pilot, and then we've got all the colours listed for him, so that's nice. Then we've got position of instrument decals, so that's worth remembering. So, some lots of detail there, how easy they'll sit. We'll have a look at the decals next. Right, paint. So that's our first option, which were the uh, D-Day invasion stripes underneath. So, and it's showing you the details there for the landing gear, which is interesting. Not seen that before. Um, and then the red squares are decals. Doesn't seem to be a huge number. Then we've got this version. Uh, we haven't got the white, but we've still got the black stripes and we've got a white nose. So that's quite distinctive. Then this one has sort of beige green um, spinner. But the rest of it's standard camouflage back to the black and white stripes. There's, there's not a huge difference in the artwork, is there? And then you get this one at the end, which has got the D Day stripes on the top and around the body. I quite like that one. I don't, I'm sure I must have done a D Day stripes aircraft at some point, probably 172. I don't remember it, but I'm sure I must have. Um, having said that, I think. That's the one I'd probably do this time. We've got a dimension there, so it's from ed outer edges of the two white stripes. 93, is that right? 93 millimeters? Yeah, 93 millimeters. Um, and they've done it again on the wing, so um, I'm guessing you're painting those stripes on. Yes, you are, because it's shouting out the colors. Uh, black and white so that's all paint not decals I think that ah, then we've got stencils common stencils so they've got the dashboard again even though they've shown it blown up got the decals for the ordinance here um, and a small number of other decals and the anti-slip and stuff which um, a comment to all four of the paint options and there we have them in profile so I think all in all that's probably my favorite um, if that didn't exist I think probably the white nose one don't know but that is a very comprehensive looking model from the instructions let's have a look at the decal we have next. a large decal sheet and unlike a number of kits we've reviewed recently, the uh, protective uh, tissue paper actually fits the decals. Um, so what have we got? Uh, oh, we, we don't have the usual format. That's interesting. And normally, uh, anyone who's been f watching my first impressions videos know that Airfix, usually they divide them up into the different paint schemes and the, and the common... Um, and it looks like they've sort of grouped them that way, but they haven't divided up and stated it like that. So a lot of the common stencils and the dashboard stencils are here at the top. Um, then we've got 
yeah, we've got the ordnance decals there. Then we've got the different things for the different paint options. All very nice. Register's good. Doesn't say the cartograph, but they usually are with Airfix. They certainly look like they are. Very, very nice. There is hardly any backing film on these. These individual letters, no backing film between them. Really, really nice. Airfix always do decals really well. It's one of their highlights. Very nice. Plastic time, and we're going to start with spray. In fact, I'll try and do them in um, letter order. Um, this is quite a long, thin sprue. So if we start at this end, uh, we've got plastic actually feels quite hard actually. Um, yeah, it doesn't feel like the usual soft plastic, but I've had this a while, so that surprises me. Anyway, um, what we can see immediately is we've got some soft molding going on, which is typical of Airfix at this point. Um, they've managed to crispen that up more recently, but uh, yeah, uh, a bit of soft molding. However, the detail is lovely. You can see we've got the uh, we've got some plumbing, which is very delicate. We've got some of the harness straps there, and we can see we've got some of the framework, which is a little bit seamy, um, but not too bad. Just looking, they look spherical. Um, I heard somewhere, and I can't remember where, that there was an issue in this kit with some of the uh, rods not being totally circular, but that they look okay. I might not have been that bit. Uh, we've got the pilot halves there. I can't see the other parts of the pilot here, so that means we've not got uh, part grouping on the sprues, which they've done with the Hellcat. The Hellcat is an absolute thing of joy. You work through one sprue, it's done. You work through the next sprue, it's done. Um, but they haven't quite done that with, with this one. Some lovely moulding there, though. Really nice. And the detail on the bulkhead there. Fortunately, we've got some sink in there because of that. Perhaps that should have been a separate piece, but we have got some sink issues in there. And again at the bottom, so a little bit of work to sort that out. Don't know how visible that will be anyway. And with lots of fastener detail, mechanical fasteners everywhere. So... Let's start with this end, and as always, you can pause this if you want to look in a bit more detail. Okay, sprue B is another long sprue, it's the same size as A. Uh, if we, again, if we start this end, the first thing we can see is the big wing braces, and they're huge, aren't they? It gives you an idea of where we're going with this, and then they'll go beyond that because our wings are a fair bit longer than that. Uh, we've got some of these delicate plumbing parts, which are nicely separated in the sprue, and the gates are actually relatively thin so cleanup shouldn't be too difficult so that's nice uh, padding on the seat that is really lovely really really lovely that looks very authentic uh, more detailed components um, other than seam cleanup nothing i can see there um, then we've got a very nice detailed dashboard there Um, you get your magnifying glasses on and paint that carefully, it will look beautiful. Uh, that looks like the sides of the seat to me. Then we've got the pilot's arms and legs. So he's got gloves on this, some whopping great sink in the arm. Don't know if that shown camera there, can you see that just there? Great big hole. 
It'll be easy. It'll be easy enough to fill, but it's there. The head's two halves, and he's got his mask on, his oxygen mask. And then we've got some dials and bits and pieces. So this is all the back surface, mainly non-detail. We do have fashion detail, and we also have quite a bit of um, ejector pin marks. Now, I guess if you're exposing this, you'll see that, and you've got some filling to do because they're sunk. So that'll take a little bit of time to do properly, but it's not too bad. We've got some sink at this point and the same place at this point. So, yeah. Bit of sink in there. Um, otherwise, uh, again, soft molded primarily. It's not very flashy though, and the parts are, are nicely done. Just give you a close up of the pilot's face. It looks all right, doesn't he? Some careful painting, and that should look really nice. Um, and then this side, not much to see. There's the arms and some of the detail on the wing spars there. Okay, right, spruce C. And on the edge here, we've got all those individual exhausts which need a little bit of clean up, but look, the ends are all open. Does that look like slide molding to you? Because it does to me. Now, I've never known Airfix do slide molding. So that is very, very interesting. It might just be, that's how they've designed the sprue, and it looks like slide molding when it isn't, but the detail is very nice. We've got the, the seam as it should be on the inside and the outside, the weld seam. Um, it's a bit flashy in places, but very nice. Very nicely done, Airfix. Um, right, then we've got these whopping grey tyres here. There's no tread on them. I don't know whether that's correct or not. I'd imagine there was some form of tread. Um, we've got this, this thing that I keep calling a life preserver because for the life of me, I don't know what it is. There's a big bit of sink there. Whether that's an issue, whether it's seen, I don't know. Um, We've got quite a lot of delicate plumbing and some of it's a bit flashy, so some delicate scraping away to get that right. But this, I can already tell this is a real builder's kit. There's a lot of joy in getting lots of little parts together and they're not actually that little in the end, so nice and easy to paint. Um, we've got, yeah, that's the sprocket there that the propeller will go on. Uh, we've got Parts of the engine block there with all the fastener heads, very nice. These look a little thick. I guess you could probably replace those with wire or something if you wanted, but cleaned up carefully. I mean, that's very flashy, that, but cleaned up carefully. Um, they should look nice. That's all your little electrical cables coming out of th these parts here. Yeah. Um, there's no real detail underneath other than that part there. Yeah, I do like those exhausts, do like them, lovely. Okay, Sprue D, we've got a right collection of parts on here. Um, a lot of them to do with the um, air scoop in this area here. Um, the first thing that my attention comes to is the lattice, um, the grill there. I think we probably need to be looking at a way of replacing that with some um, photo etch or some wire mesh or something to replace that. Um, it's a little bit chunky. Um, doesn't detract from the other components which are really quite nice. We've got lots of lovely fastener detail on there. 
the pipe work other than a bit of seam clean up is nice and, and clear uh, we've got that um, air scoop front there that's quite distinctive it's really nice and thin um, yeah very nice uh, lots of little bits of pipe work and bits and pieces that are all nicely done I mean we've got little twists in the cables and things which is a nice little touch um, this is the landing gear and it just worries me how thin that plastic is whether it's going to take the weight of all this plastic on it um, yeah it does bother me that we, we might get some buckling uh, so whether we can reinforce that with um, a bit of brass rod or something like that I'm not sure we'll have to look at that come the time got a little bit of sink in the landing gear at the back end when you get big thick chunky plastic like that it's always a risk yeah um, nothing that can't be filled and sanded though lots of lovely detail on the skin surfaces though yeah Nothing wrong with any of that. Let me get you in a bit closer. Some lovely thought through cables and pipe work there. See what I mean about the landing gear. And the plastic is not particularly thick on them. But with a bit of clean up, most of this um, is just seam removal and away you go. Um, a little bit of filling, not too bad. Right then, sprue E, it's a single part, which is the underside of the, the wings. You can see the openings for the landing gear there. We've got openings there for the spent ammunition to drop out. Um, on the inside we've got all those location points that we saw in the instructions need to be drilled out and a little bit of rib work there so that might be visible there is some projector pins there to sort if that is the case um, nice crisp bit of molding with lots and lots of fashion detail now if this was a ship I'd be talking about the canning I don't know whether it's called the same thing on an aircraft but there is some lovely stressed metal panel detail um, on here. It is very, very nicely done. Very nicely done. It's subtle. It's not overdone. Um, when you try doing it yourself, you just overdo it, I think. But I think that looks really, really nice. The detail on top where you've got some is a little soft molded but that is the theme running through here but yeah nothing wrong with that at all really really nice okay sprue f another big um sprue can't get it all on camera and i don't want to take the camera up and, and be too far away so we'll start at this end we've got the cannons here and they're actually quite nicely done. Uh, we noticed in the instructions that we have to drill out the ends and that's where they've put the uh, connection point for the spruce. So that's where the gates are. So cleanup's going to be minimal on those. And we've got some internal uh, wing um, parts. And they're very nice. They look like stamped out steel. They've got that nice, or aluminium I should say, nice little stamped in curve to the ends there these are the um, gun covers for the cannons which um, got some nice fastener detail on then we've got our um, bullets in the in the bullet belt there which we can nicely nice bit that they're separated because we can paint them individually and then just snap them into place lovely uh, ammunition boxes, more bits of the internal uh, wings. We've got all sorts of 
cables molded into that as well so that's nice um, some lovely details here look at look at the wiring coming out of there really lovely so this all looks like internal wing parts these are these go on top of the cannons there and then we've got this little loop of cabling that I wasn't quite sure what it was and then we've got the extension to the wing spars and yeah we've got some on the inside we've got some little storage pouches and on this side um, where the guns go through we've got uh, what looks like material there it's all folded and creased so that's lovely that's really nicely done some very nice detail on there nothing wrong with any of that I can't see uh, any heavy flash I can't really see any sink no, nothing wrong with that at all. Sprue G now, and we have lots of large parts on this one. Another big sprue. So if we start at this end, we've got three different styles of spinner there, and two different spinner backs, although they don't obviously look massively, massively different. Um, and then we've got two different centerpieces. Um, and then those are the little pieces that fit into the back of the propellers. This one's broken off, um, which has caused a bit of damage, unfortunately. And we do have sink in that one, but that's the only one. They're big enough to sort out with any, without any issues, though. Uh, blades are okay. We've got the fuel tanks there. Um, more tanks there and then we've got the two halves of the shells but we've not got the fins on this one i'm not quite sure what those are um guessing they're drop tanks of some type and then we've got the uh mounts for the rockets there and they they've got a bit of detail on them as well nothing wrong with any of that lot really Sprue H, uh, a much smaller sprue than the others we've seen. Uh, they, they could be the wing tips, actually. Yeah, they might be wing tips. Um, and they're the bits that we saw going on the inside surfaces of the upper wing. So, yeah. Uh, I think that is the closed landing gear. Lots of detail on all of this. Loads of rivet detail in there and some little cables and so on um, and I was going to say there's there's not much in the way of canning texture you can see it on the uh, tail here um, but actually in the light there is you can just see that um, but it's so subtle that uh, looking directly at it you can't see it until you get the light right um, and it's the same here with these flaps uh, and these here and they look like it all looks lovely um, there's no issues with the molding of that no sink not really any cleanup other than your your sprue gate so that is all lovely sprue i now and what we've got here is lots of um various flaps we've got the the tail piece which is two halves and we've got um, a number of flaps here that are also in two halves um, we've got some very nice rivet detail on these and also countersunk fastener detail in places. The, the number of different things here means makes me feel that we've got some options and we'd have to study the instructions more closely to understand that. And then we've got the, the sort of the, the hinges for them here which we saw needed to be modified in the instructions as I recall. Um, and the uh, connecting piece there for the, the tail um, and then we've got those small flaps which fit into there so yeah lots and lots of parts there and actually on these flaps here 
got all the gussets in and although they're a little oversized they actually look okay and under paint will look okay there's some um ejector pin marks that need to be dealt with um, with those but most of these won't get seen then we appear to have an alternative um, exhaust arrangement or two ex uh, alternative exhaust arrangements maybe don't believe we're using those in in this particular kit um, and then we've got the the foot stirrup there which has got the little grab handle on which is nice that's often missed um, that looks like blankers for the um, wing lamps and then we've got some um, little braces which go inside the wing that we saw pit up tube um, and one or two other bits so yeah lots of surface detail which is what we're looking for and some alternative parts So next we've got the two uh, wing sections, so they're on sprues uh, J and K, um, and effectively it's two different sides of the same thing, so we'll just look at one of them. Um, it's a good thick piece of plastic actually. Um, so we've got this um, stressed effect on the metalwork again, uh, which looks really nice in the light. Don't know if we can pick that up. There we go. As soon as that's primed, it'll really pop out. Lots and lots of rivet detail. All the uh, all the detail is there as you'd expect. And if you decide that you want to scratch build the interior, you could actually use that as a template. It's really handy. Um, we've got the opening there for the. Um, loading up the uh, ammunition for the for the guns uh, and there's a little recessed lip now i reckon that's probably not right these would uh, fasten down onto onto beams and the things the panels on this so we'd have to have a look at that really nice uh, crisp molding nothing wrong with that at all Okay, we are on sprue M now. Now, let's have a look at this. Sprue M, we have the two fuselage halves, and what we've got is a lot of fastener detail on here. Some of it is sunk, some of it, like this row here, is raised. I can feel it under my finger. Um, we've got some raised plate detail there and there, um, and we've got the little foothole thing in there um, we've got some um, screw head fasteners or something like that um, removable bolts of some type which are very nicely detailed they're not overly done um, they don't sit too proud um, which sometimes they do on larger scales um, yeah very nice and we have some um, bulges in some of the panels um, and a little bit of stress work in some of the other panels. So all in all, it looks really nice and natural. Um, under paint, that will be lovely. Oh yeah, really like that. And if I flick her inside, we've got some basic rib detail. Um, it's not got any structural detail to it. It's just a rib shape, really. Um, so it might be visible in certain angles, so probably worth just painting it up. We have, in this area here where we're going to be having the um, tail wheel, there is some ejector pin marks there. So I uh, need to have a look and see how much of that is seen and how visible it is, but probably we've got at least one, possibly two there we're going to have to fill. I think there is a few here that might need doing as well, but I'm not 100% sure. 
Um, but they're only minor. A couple of goes have missed a surface set and jobs are good in. Right, we are on sprue N. All exterior parts, um, the largest being the underside of the fuselage here. And we can see again, lots of beautiful fastener detail, um, stressing of the um, individual plates, the bulges there, really nice. We have some raised fasteners at the wing joins, where the wing root is. Uh, and obviously we're gonna have um, some clear parts going in there. And then right at the end, we've got a couple of rows of raised rivets and right against this joint. So if we need any filler in here, that that could give us an issue. We're going to have to be very careful with that. Otherwise, we might end up having to replace rivets that we've sanded away. Um, then we've got um, a couple of um, pieces there. Again, very nice. You can feel the stress under my fingers. A um, couple of lipped holes in them and the uh, removable fasteners again very nicely done i'm going to come back to these two because they're my favorite two pieces on the sprue uh, and then we've got other bits and pieces um large sections all to the same standard um this is the bit that meets the air scooping under the propeller um all nicely done there's no real distortion in the rivets there it, under under paint and wash will look great um, and actually the, the hinges are nice and crisp and there's no flash. I can't see any sink, so really nice. And then these are my favorite parts because look at the stressing on them. We've got little dimples here. Um, it's on both parts, so I imagine it's a place that commonly got dimpled or maybe dented for some reason, but it looks so natural. Done such a good job of this, Airfix have. Um, then these parts here are the um, bits that uh, open up to allow you to um, load the ammunition in for the wing guns. So we'll have detail on the inside. Um, it's not as crisp on the inside. It's a bit more soft molded, particularly I'm talking about the rivets here. But they are raised rivets and they're proud enough to just stand out with... Um, uh, a bit of a wash and a dry brush, they'll stand out quite nicely and maybe a little bit of chipping or something. So um, I don't think it's an issue. Um, some of the side walls are a little thick. That's just the limitation of, of plastic moulding to, to a degree. Um, but they will look the part once in place. That when the eye sees them, they'll look like what they're supposed to be, which is what we're after. So, yeah. Very, very nice. Okay, next we're on um, the first of our clear sprues, and we've got two of these, um, and they've come in these little sponge pockets wrapped in um, some form of tissue paper. Um, so that is really nice attention to detail. I mean, Airfix have upped the game in the packaging of this kit because of the price of this kit, and I think that is a reasonable thing for them to have done. Apologies for my partner sneezing in the background there. She's getting over COVID like me. Um, what we've got on this part is we've got the wing lenses and the uh, tip lights there. The tip lights are solid plastic, so we might want to drill a little hole or something for the uh, bulb. Uh, we'll think about that nearer the time. Um, the lenses I'm not sure about because we've got this sort of, you can see just behind this lens here, you can see the line of the, the plastic part. So how well that's going to come out remains to be seen. I might be tempted to modify that a little bit if I can. Don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what that looks like. Um, then we've got a section with the uh, compass on there, which is clear. Um, we've got the inside lenses of the wing lights there, which have got the little, if you can see the little swirl in them, that should be black. So um, it's a little black metal insert. So that is raised on the inside. So you should be able to go around with a paint, paint pen, paint that in and You've got a bulb there as well, so that will look stunning. Um, we've got 
a couple of other lamps, not quite sure what they are. Um, Wingle, and then that one is the large one that goes underneath. Now that one has a little bit of um, an abrasive rubbed effect. So it's been rubbing against something in there and it's slightly matte. Um, so that will need um, polishing out with some polishing compo compound, something like that. And then I've got two tiny little parts and I'm not quite sure what they are. Um, but they're all nice and clear. Um, I'm not worried about distortion in the wing lenses at all. So let's wrap that up and put that away. A much larger clear sprue is the canopy and the uh, car door here. Um, it's really clear. Uh, I mean, most of this you're going to paint actually, but having the glass in is great. Um, could you roll the window down like a car? I, 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 probably not. Um, but um, yeah, you can see why it's called the car door version, can't you? Um, then we've got very, very clear almost perfect front screen there's a little bit of distortion in the side panels but actually when you're looking through them it's not so bad uh, it looks worse looking at it front on than it is when you look at it square on if you like um, when we've got a little glazed part that i guess goes behind the um, pilot's seat um, then we've got that um, a little glass unit there. In fact, the connection point is on the little glass square piece that you want to be clear. And there's a mold seam on it, so there's quite a bit of clean up to do on this part here. Um, and then we've got canopies, one with a hole in, one, one without. And then a top section, one with a bulge in, one without. So you need to understand what that all means and uh, whether we what the options are um, but they look very nice and there's a bit of distortion through them but actually the glass is much more in scale in terms of wall th uh, thickness it's, it's thinner than some that i see on 172 um, i'm guessing it's because of the size of it but so there is a bit of distortion um as i look at the, the grid lines but it's not massive and when you look at it when it's over the paintwork it's not really going to be noticeable so i think that's fine they're very very clear crystal clear um again it's an area that um airfix have really managed to up the game on is clear parts so yeah i think that's really good so our final sprue is z and we have got um, the tail parts for the ordnance on here so we can see here with actually the tail fins aren't too bad in terms of thickness um, and then we've got the what will be the circular parts that go around them and they're thicker at one end and then taper so um, might be able to do that better um, with a bit of plastic card maybe use them as a former don't know thinking out loud um we've got what the the wing cannons here got some nice rivet detail it's a bit soft molded um even more so than normal because of the the shape of it i think um then that's the mounting point for the bombs there we've got more fins with a little um propeller thing at the back end there so that's nicely done uh, we've got part of the seat belt, uh, seat harness there, some frame, the seat sides, and a seat top. So might be some alternative parts there. Um, we've got a head cushion and some dangling um, seat harnesses, um, and then one or two little things whatever they are don't know um and a weighted yeah male and female half tail tire 
um, a weighted one. So if you remember in the instructions, you could have it weighted face down or just shove that up into the fuselage if it's going to be up in the air. And then we've got two male wheel halves. So they must be alternative hubs, I would imagine. And a little bit of pipe work, so yeah. Uh, no flash, no sink, a little bit soft molded, but actually gets you where you want to be in terms of detail. That completes the plastic parts. We'll round up the kit now, and then in episode two, which will be out either tomorrow or later today at this time of recording, I'm not sure. Um, in part two, we will have a look at aftermarket for this because that's a half an hour video in its own right and we're at probably at about an hour with this. So, what do I think of the kit? So, there we have it. The Airfix 1-24 scale Hawker Typhoon Mark 1B car door. What are my first impressions? Um, okay, so, it's a very big kit. 1-24 scale is a very big kit and with a big kit comes some big opportunities to shove some detail in and Airfix have not shirked from that. So if you think about um, the build, we've got lots and lots and lots of parts going into that. So um, I, think, I think probably more complex than the Hellcat. Now interestingly, I bought this after the Hell, Hellcat, um, and I'll tell you for why um, at the end. The Hellcat was a newer kit, and I had a, a number of fit issues with that, so I'm expecting there to be some fit issues with this. Although, uh, as a first impression, I can't really take anything away from the kit for fit issues that I've not yet discovered. All the parts looked okay. There was nothing bowed or warped or um, so badly um, formed that you couldn't use it. We had some sink in places, but actually we didn't have very much. Um, I think um, the on the downside was the soft molding, but we expect that of an Airfix kit of this age. So... It's not very old, but it's only very recently that Airfix have managed to tackle their soft moulding issues. Highlight of the build is obviously all the detail um, and the fact that you've got a very complex structure inside there um, that's be, that you can make up from all the model parts. And then it's up to you whether you're covering it up, part covering it up or not covering up. Um, and it's the same with the wings. The build-up of the inside of the wings it is also quite detailed. So um, th there's there's plenty there um, to give you an awful lot of fun. Now, um, right at the start of the manual, it tells you that this kit is aimed at experienced modelers, uh, and that's where I think this kit comes into its own. Um, the the reason um, why I bought this kit is because um, this came out before the um, Hellcat. In fact, the Hellcat was the first 124 scale kit I'd ever bought. And I bought it because I'd seen all those test shots of the lovely radial engine. And I thought, you know what, I fancy building that. So I bought it. And today, the Hellcat, is the most fun I have ever had building a model kit. Um, and that's because we were going through the challenges of this doesn't fit, how to make that work, um, do I want this open or closed, how do I add detail to this point, how do I want to paint it, how do I want to weather it. There was so much, that model gave so much to the modeler, it was absolutely a joy and I caught myself smiling pretty much all the way through that build it was just absolute fun it, it was uh, glorious and about halfway through the build I was enjoying it so much um, that 
I went out and bought this. Um, and actually, I, I think I even like this more than the, the um, Hellcat. Um, because the Hellcat really um, is just um, an engine. Um, yeah, you've got um, a swing wing, which is nice, and uh, the cockpit's very detailed, which is nice. But I think you've actually got um, better options with this, um, and um, uh, uh, and the the design of the actual aircraft is such that you've got more to look at uh, in its disassembled uh, phase. So I think this is going to be tons and tons of fun. And because they haven't spent a lot of time giving you parts that you will never see, some of them you won't, you won't see, but because they've, they've, they've concentrated on uh, giving, um, giving you detail that you can see, like in the, the wing, around the wing guns and around the engine that you can have uncoupled and the air intake uncoupled, because they've focused on that and they've not given you a lot of stuff that you don't need, they've kept the price down. And, you know, at the time that I bought this, it was about £110. And that's a huge amount of kit for the money. Um, and you've got absolute hours of build time in this. So the return on that money is probably better than any other kit manufacturer other than possibly MiniArt. So uh, what I would say is, if you're interested in one of these, shop around. They're, they've dropped off from the Airfix website this year, but there's plenty still in the system. Shop around, get a good price. So, there you have it. Um, you enjoy your modelling. Take care, and I will see you very soon.